In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our video version of worship for this, the fourth Sunday after Trinity. And today we hear the story of Jesus in a boat on a storm and of the calming of the storm. Today we worship God, the God of all creation, and acknowledge God's sovereignty, remind ourselves that everything is under the authority of God and that, that uh, Jesus has the authority of God. So we begin by coming before God in prayer. Let us bring before God who is merciful and mighty the ways in which we have fallen short of our vocation as God's children. For the times when we have not stood up to those who abuse their power. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times when we have turned away when we could have made a difference. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times when we have colluded with the destruction of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray our prayer for today. Saving God, entering the flood and storm of chaos and confusion. Speak peace to our fearful hearts, that we might find our faith in him whose word brings rest to all creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, of wind and wave. Amen. And now our reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? So I don't know if you can uh, think of storms that you've been in. Um, when you're inside, when you're in, in a good building, usually a storm isn't that much of a worry, uh, unless it's a really serious storm. Um, we did have... Um, water, rainwater come into the church above the organ when we had a hailstorm a few weeks back uh, and the hail filled the uh, channels on the roof um, and then the rainwater backed up behind the hail and the rainwater kind of overflowed into the roof space and, uh, and down. Um, that, was, that was a pretty scary storm. I was driving when that hail uh, came i was coming back from seeing my parents in nottingham and it was scary um you could hardly see anything um i had to slow right down this noise of the hailstones hitting the car was tremendous um and of course it did cause damage at church a lot of damage and uh when you're out in a storm you do feel incredibly vulnerable. And if you're, um, for instance, camping and there's a storm, a, a few times, we've had many family camping holidays over the years 
and uh, there have been fantastic times that we've had but also there have been times when there have been horrendous storms and it's a scary thing. Um, Michaela and I did um, during um, kind of, it, was, it must have been 2020, uh, sort of um, that summer after the scare of COVID when we were actually allowed to travel again. Was that 2020 or 2021? Anyway, we uh, did a holiday, summer holiday, where we went round the coast of Wales. And during that holiday, there were two times when we were hit by named storms. And uh, on both occasions, we were in our camper van and we were able to put the, the roof down. Here yeah, we have a um, uh, you know, roof that rises up, but if the weather's really dodgy, we can pull the roof down again. Um, so we just kept our roof down and we, you know, sat tight um, and the storm was okay. But in the morning, we looked around the campsite and there were people whose tents were completely trashed. Um, people who uh, had not had any sleep that night. Um, a powerful storm is a powerful thing. And often associated with water, of course. Um, on both occasions where we were hit by really strong uh, storms, we were by the sea and the, the rain and the wind came in off the sea. Um, and in our story today, we have Jesus on a boat uh, with his friends out at sea, in this case the Sea of Galilee, a lake, but it's a big lake and uh, a lake that is renowned because of the shape of the hills around it. It's renowned for having storms. And a, a big storm hits. I've got an image behind me um, can, you know, that's uh, thinking on that story. And in this story, uh, Jesus calms the storm. And the story is told, I, I think the story is told for two reasons. I think the story is told to, to remind us that Jesus is Lord of all creation, that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus has the authority of God. I think it's also told to us because as we face the storms in our life, metaphorical storms, we might want to turn to Jesus and seek Jesus' help in calming those storms. For me, that's the two things that I latch on to in this story. But it's worth remembering as well that in this uh, current world, we face climate crisis. We face, we face potential disaster as a human race because we are destroying our planet. And there is no... You know, political parties will argue about how we get to net zero. There are some political parties arguing that it's an all, all a hoax and that we don't need to get to net zero or whatever. Uh, and I hope that you don't believe that stuff because, for me, the evidence is overwhelming that we are destroying our planet and we are getting more and more um, storms as we affect, we human beings affect the nature of our planet, we're causing more, um, more complex um, interreactions, we're causing uh, disruption, we're causing um, more extreme weather situations. And that is a result of our activity, our global warming. So, for me, I want to take from this passage today a challenge that we need to work for um, a more sustainable planet. Um, we think of storms as acts of God. There's not anything we can do about it. But too often, the acts of God are caused by human behaviour, or they're, or they're exacerbated, they're made worse by our human behaviour. They're made worse because we are doing things to our atmosphere that um, cause problems. And also by the way in which we um, 
adapt nature. Um, we get more flooding these days because we've we've um, concreted over bits. You know, we've concreted over our garden, so there's nowhere for the rain to go other than into the drain, and from the drain it goes into the river, and the river floods. We've, you know, cleared um, forests that would have not, would have previously absorbed that water, and now they're just um, uh, crops maybe, and the water flows down and flows into the rivers and floods. So we we are often causing some of the problems that we have of storms. So we need to challenge. Uh, challenge those in power to say we must stop this we must find other ways of living we must stop damaging our planet we must take care of it we all have an obligation on us to do that to 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 do our part for god's world but it can all seem overwhelming and there will be times when we feel utterly overwhelmed. I'm going to finish today with a lovely hymn, Calm Me Lords, You Calm the Storm. And it's a prayer. And it's a prayer that all of us can use. So let us, a prayer that all of us can use as a way of, of saying, bring calm and peace into my life, Lord, when I'm feeling full of anxiety, full of stress, overwhelmed. Please bring me peace and calm. We still need to work for a better world. Let's do that work. But let's also acknowledge that God is in control and that, and that we can seek God's calm, peace and healing. The two things can go together. Working for God's kingdom, working to make things better, but also offering ourselves into God's hands to seek God's peace and healing. Amen. Let us turn to prayer. We bring before God the creator of all things, the concerns of our lives, our communities and our world. We pray for all those in positions of authority, that they may understand with humility that their authority is under God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are oppressed by, by despots, tyrants and oppressive governments, that they may be strengthened in their righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for those who speak truth to power, even when it costs them their livelihoods, their reputations, or even their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves that we may seek out opportunities to take part in the stewardship of God's creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great God, who created the universe in all its infinite complexity and wonder, accept our worship and prayers. We ask this through our Saviour, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're coming towards an end of our service for today. As usual, we do encourage you to 
uh, join in uh, in one way or another. You know, if you're not nearby, um, just watching these videos is great. But you know, let us know you're there. Comment um, on the videos. Uh, chat to us on the social media. Whatever. Um, if you are local, do come and see us. You know, pop into church. And um, yeah, and uh, next Sunday, very exciting. Next Sunday, our own Peter is being ordained as a priest in Manchester Cathedral. Well, sorry, next Saturday, Peter is being ordained as a priest in, in uh, Manchester Cathedral. And on the Sunday morning, it will be Peter's first Eucharist um, as a priest. So he will be presiding. Um, and he'll be doing all the stuff and we will celebrate with him. In the evening next week as well, five o'clock onwards, we're having a bit of a summer social with um, bring some food, we'll have the barbecues on, uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of a party, we'll have a bit of live music, um, a bit of just chilling out with one another. The weather will be gorgeous, of course, as it always is in an English summer. Um, and we'll have a nice time. So do come along to that if you get a chance. We're going to finish today with Calm Me, Lord, As You Calm the Storm. Lovely hymn that really um, works with that imagery uh, from our Gospel reading to pray for God to bring us uh, a stillness and a calm. Um, it's a lovely hymn to sing when you're feeling anxiety, when you're feeling stressed. Um, it's a lovely hymn to help you kind of recenter and be still. So I yeah, I'll offer it to you. Um, we're going to finish with that. First, a prayer of blessing. As we go out to live lives of obedience and service to God. Let us commit ourselves again to the stewardship of God's creation and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Come, ye Lord, as you come, the soul still me, Lord, keep me from harm, let all the tumult within to
Let all the tumult within. 